Hi guys, Squall here. Welcome back to another Euro Truck video. This one is Euro Truck 1.28. This is the public beta. Uh, you may have seen my American Truck video, which went out uh, a day or two ago, where I covered the 128 version in that, and I showed you double and triple trailers. Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at the Euro Truck double trailers that have been brought in uh, with 128. Again, wow, what the heck is that over there? <laughs> Did you see that? Okay. Okay, so that's normal. <laughs> Not. Something tells me that one of my... Um, that's probably a Jazzy Cat trailer mod, which hasn't been updated for 128. Uh, it's a 127 one. So that's uh, a funny little baguette right there. Uh, but the trailer we're going to pick up today is this one. This double here. Which we'll go and get in a second. I'm still laughing at that. I hadn't spotted that before I started the video. That is hilarious. Anyway, so um, apart from that, I'm using ProMods, ProMods 2.2 Beta. Now, ProMods is not yet out yet, uh, so I've got uh, access to it so I can show it. I, I, in my Sunday Night Trucking streams, I've been showing you the 2.2 Beta, and I've also made a video where I showed you some of, of Ireland. 2.2 uh, Beta has been updated so that it works with 128. So what that means is... Uh, ProMods is definitely not going to be coming out before 1.28 comes out. So when 1.28 comes out, I would expect ProMods to come out, you know, a week or two perhaps after that. Um, it's it's getting more and more polished with each release. Uh, but today what we're going to do is we're going to take a job in Finland. And what I wanted to show you is because the double trailers in 128 of Eurotruck only work in the Scandinavian countries uh, where they're actually legally allowed. So you're not going to get a doubles anywhere around here. Uh, but what it does mean is that uh, ProMods is actually fine with generating double trailers, which is a, a nice thing to have. So we're in the uh, the Volvo, the Aradeth Volvo VNL. It's a very nice truck, and uh, we'll go ahead and get it started. One of the things I do like about this truck is the way that the wheel moves and the... I love this sat-nav here. That sat-nav is so cool. Like, it just pops up out the dashboard. I wish every truck had that. I've also got the, uh, the Minions here, and also the Wally. And then down there, we've got a cat. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a stuffed cat, but it hasn't moved in a while, so I'm going to go ahead and assume that it is a stuffed cat. Right, let's get it into gear. And I'll show you where we're going today. Now, the 128 is a public beta, so if you want to try it, you can, of course, opt into it on Steam. Just right-click on your game uh, in Steam, select Properties, Go to the betas tab and you'll see in the list, you'll see 128 public beta is there. You can choose that one and opt into it. Just bear in mind that your map mods like uh, 2.1 of pro mods is not going to work. Sorry, 2.19 of pro mods is not going to work. You're going to have to wait for 2.2 to come out. So there is that sacrifice. And we've got the cog option, which if we click on, you can see it again, just like in ATS, we can choose not to go for a double trailer. We could drop down to a different style single, but I'm going to take this one here. And we are heading from, and excuse my pronunciation, Karsamaki down to Helsinki. I can say Helsinki, okay, but with all these umlauts, I have no idea how you actually say this. It's going to pop up and show us that everything's all well. You know, there's nothing particularly interesting about this trailer other than it being a double. It's 30 tons, so uh, it's pretty heavy. I don't think the route down Finland is, let's put the uh, wipers on, is particularly hilly. I expect a lot of trees. This is Finland after all. Look, just look at that. I just That floating trailer is just making me laugh so much. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around here. Now, you can see straight away one of the issues with the double trailers is, and I've mentioned this in my ATS video, the amount of pickup room that we have is it's pretty limited. I mean, just look at this. There's no way, particularly since I'm not using a cab over truck here, uh, there is pretty much no way for me to get a lined up. You know, it, it's going to be close, as you'll see here. And this is one of the things that you're going to have to um, worry about when you 
take the double trailers, particularly if you take a long wheelbase truck like this Volvo. Uh, you're going to have this kind of fun. You're going to have to come in at an angle and try and judge your fifth wheel onto that kingpin. Oh, it's all right. It looks like I've not got advance turned on. Hang on a second. Let me see if this trailer is... I, th I think I turned off advanced mode because I was using the Jazzy Cat mods and, and they weren't compatible. Some of them weren't compatible. Let me uh, try turning it back on. Uh, advanced trailer coupling there. Let's put that back on and see what happens. I should, in theory, be able to pick this trailer up. But I think this truck was a little bit too high for some of the Jazzy Cat trailers, which is why I turned it off. So this may or may not work. Is it the, the trouble with this truck is it's quite, as you can see, it's actually quite a high wheelbase. It's a bit too high for most of the trailers. So I couldn't even get the truck underneath the trailer when I was trying. And even now it doesn't want to go in, does it? Are we leveled up there? It looks straight. Yeah, I'm not sure it's going to work. We'll give it one last shot. Oh, there we go. With a bit of encouragement, it just about went on. Uh, that's not a fault of the trailers as much as uh, it's the truck. This this VNL is... The fifth wheel is, is a bit too high. And if we were to take that military one there, it wouldn't even fit underneath. So that's why I had to turn it off. But anyway, you can see the lack of room here that we have. We, You know, we're going to have to sort of shimmy around a little bit just to get out of here. And this is something we saw in the American truck version as well. But, it does look cool. It does look absolutely awesome. Trucking with a single trailer is really fun. Trucking with a double or a triple is just immense fun. I love it. Can't wait for the heavy, interesting trailers to come out. The next few months after release are going to be very, very interesting. With the new trailers that will come out from the modders, it's going to be so much fun. There we go. Right, we're on the road. Let's give it some welly. This thing likes to rev between 1,000 and 2,000. That's where its green zone is. Let's see how many uh, miles we've got left. 442 kilometers. Hopefully the rain's going to stop at some point. Actually, I just realized I need some fuel. Blind me. So let me bring the info display up as well. Trip, instant, average. Okay. Not a particularly interesting trip meter. Come on. Blimey, this... Although it indicates 30 tons, it feels a lot heavier than 30 tons. You can actually hear the engine working really hard to move this weight. And there's a fuel station. Right. Hmm. It's on the opposite side of the road. Let me quickly check the map. Because ideally I want something on this side of the road, but it depends how far it is. Okay, it's actually quite a way to the next one. It's going to be pushing it. Alright, this is going to be a fun turn in then. What do we actually turn in? Do we turn in here? Actually, we turn in here. That's good. That's cool. We can go on this way, pop out the other side. Because, I mean, th this is the thing about the doubles and triples. We've already seen some problems with uh, pick-up and drop-off points uh, in the doubles and triples in ATS. I showed you those in the video. I'm expecting to see some in ETS too because, quite frankly, a lot of the drop-off points uh, and the pick-up points are not compatible, if you like, with doubles and triples. They were never built for them. And so retrospectively adding these super long trailers, although it is super fun, and I'm really glad SES did it, it's not without its problems. And... Uh, 
also the fuel stations are another issue. You know, I know for a fact that there are some interesting fuel stations, uh, shall we say, that are going to be pretty tricky when it comes to turning into them with a double or a triple. Particularly when they're on the opposite side of the road and, you know, you have to do a 180 degree turn. You have to do a 180 degree turn just to even... Um, that was my phone going, by the way. Just to even get into the fuel station. I, I really should learn to mute my phone before I start recording. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, so, you know, I got away with it on that one. Because it let me drive... Stop. Good grief. Okay. Note to self, the brakes need a bit of time to operate. On that particular fuel station there, I could drive through from that from one side but normally if it's on the other side of the road you have to sort of do a 180 degree turn to get back in and even with a single trailer uh, particularly with a long wheelbase truck it can be very very difficult so with a double it's going to be even more so by the way did you spot this wonderful carbon fiber and texture that I managed to build on my truck I think it looks splendid All right, let's see if we can get out of here that is a very strange place for a giveaway sign. Just slapped in the middle of the road there. Okay, we got lucky. There we go. Now the minions are swinging away. Unfortunately, with the, uh, I think I may have pointed this out before, but with the minions, there's only one articulation point on the, which is the top bit. The actual minions uh, don't articulate between themselves, if you see what I mean. Like, there's no, where they hold hands, there's no joint there. Which would be even more fun if it did, because really, I could really get them to swing around. <laughs> but the Wally sits there, waggles his head, which I love the little Wally. Looks so cool. So yeah, this is a nice, nice truck to drive. This isn't the Steam Workshop. So it's very easy to access. Just just look for the word Aradeth in uh, the Steam Workshop and you'll find it. Well, in terms of Pro Mods 2.2, whoops, I can tell you that it is shaping up very nicely. Um, let me turn the wipers off here. I will probably, just a little bit nearer the time, I'll check out a video just going over, just give you a quick overview of Pro Mods 2.2, uh, just to show you what's actually been added, because... The problem is, is I, you know, I could make a video on Pro Mod 2.2 now and talk about what's been added, but last week they added a, another city, so there's always the danger that if I make that video, you know, too far away from release day, then, well, they may add some more stuff in, and I want it to be a complete video, so I'll probably make one, I'm guessing probably next week I'll make one, I'll cover it and, and talk about what's in 2.2, but it is shaping up very nicely, and, and I know for a fact that uh, the Irish... Uh, truckers out there are ecstatic about this release because they've wanted Ireland. In fact, a lot of us have wanted Ireland uh, in Eurotruck for a very long time. And Promods have finally gone ahead and done it. Oh, steady on there. But uh, it's, never, it's never bad driving through my summer car country, which is Finland, which is where we are right now. It's always, always pretty. No mosquitoes, though, and no Mr. Wub Wub in his yellow car. Just trucking. Oh, what was speed we want? We're on about 80 there, aren't we? Okay, let's lock in the cruise there. 77, that'll do. Let's have a look at this double trailer. That fits really nicely, doesn't it? Look, the truck is perfectly suited to this kind of box trailer. But it does look absolutely awesome. Now, also in this release of 128, they, they messed about with the lights. I don't know if you've seen it, but they've on their blog post, they'll show you some before and after screenshots. But essentially, these lights here are now a lot more realistic, not only on, um, on the truck that you drive, but also on all the AI vehicles. Uh, they don't kind of have this horrible, super glowy brightness about them anymore. They're a lot more realistic. And uh, apparently that was quite a, quite a big change for them to do, but they've gone ahead and done it. So the lighting in the game has been improved, as well as um, bringing in the other bits and pieces. The other one is back in the main menu. You can change your... Um, oops, drop it down to 50. You can change your background now. 
you can change the background in the in-game menu uh, and some of the ones that they give you for free are quite nice in fact I even noticed today that in the background which, so when your trucks kind of sat in this showroom there's actually a person walking around at the back that goes and sits at their desk which I hadn't spotted before so they've actually it's not static either they've actually added some animation into it which is quite nice personally I think I would like to see some I'd like to see them work on two things in this game one of them is the AI it's definitely got worse it's it's definitely horrendous now like there are situations now that are just crazy and they need to look at that I think they because that affects everybody if you play this game if you're not online if you play this game like offline like I'm doing now the AI is a significant part of your game and they need to work on that because there's some crazy things happening second thing I'd like them to work on is the job market I think the job market is pretty much you know unchanged in quotes since the game came out the way that it generates jobs the kind of jobs that it generates um, I know we've got this online thing but since the release that online thing hasn't really been fleshed out properly I don't think and I'd like to see them flesh that out because I often look at a city and I'll see some crazy jobs like I'll see jobs that are half a kilometer long like I saw a heavy haul job that was down the road 300 meters you know is it, why is that even in there and then I'll set a filter and say you know maximum job of one is 700 700 kilometers and I'll see all my jobs are within 700 k's except then there'll be one that's like 2000 k's so I know there are problems but that aside I'll often find myself thinking, well, you know what would be cool is if I, if I can kind of work my way uh, from, say, Finland, I want to work my way down towards the UK. So I want to pick jobs that are taking me sort of west, in a westerly direction. And I'll take a job, I'll go west, I'll get to that city, I'll click on that city, and I can't find anything but either south southerly jobs or east jobs. And you just think, well... Why can't it just make sure that it generates jobs that are going in, in you know, all directions? If you go and look at something like uh, FS Economy, which is like a flight sim thing, uh, FS Economy generates jobs in the in the airports that you land at, and it even has like a direction on the compass, so it shows you which direction they're heading, and it and it generates a variety of jobs in pretty much all directions. So there's always something for you to choose from, whether whether you're looking for a particular kind of load or whether you're just looking for a particular length of job or a particular direction that it's going you there's enough variety that you can find something and I don't know about you but I kind of find in this game the job market is lacking in that department it just doesn't have that variety it doesn't generate jobs and then reflect on them and go well is this a bit too one-sided all the jobs too long or are all the jobs in, t in one direction like what can I do to improve that so that would be nice just to get you know better job pickups I think um, what's going on here then so what I mean lane lane merging is still a thing they've never nailed with lane with lane merging as soon as a truck or a vehicle approaches uh, a lane closure or a lane opening it freaks out hits the brakes and um, and it causes accidents, it causes problems. Anyway, th those are the things I would like to see them work on. You know, I love having these like little background things being done, like the background image and the, the lens flares and stuff, but I also want the, the stuff that affects me day to day. I would like to see them sort out, and my frames are just taking a tank in here. My FPS has just dropped all of a sudden. So I think there's something around here that's not too well optimised. There you go. See it? Look at that. Just when I got to this city here. I mean, this is one of the things that map modders have to do when they create content. They have to spend quite a bit of time optimising it. You know, it's all very well. The, the thing is about things like pro mods is they're super detailed, but they contain thousands of objects. You know and tens of thousands of polygons and the problem is if you let an artist go crazy and just put you know a thousand cars in a car park all nicely lit up by street lights surrounded by buildings and bushes it might look amazing but it might run at 10 fps 
because there's just too much that has to be done. So look at my frame right now, it's fine. And so a lot of a lot of what map modders do is having having created something, they then have to optimize it so that it's it hits the balance between looking amazing and actually being performant. And I'm I'm guessing whatever was back there, let's just have a quick look at the map to see where we came from. Something around this town here, however you say that, Yavaskia. There's something around here that's just not been optimized properly, and as we went through that section there, the frame rate took a dip. So that's something that the the authors are gonna have to look at. Ooh, doubles. Little BDF. Please tell me you're not going right. Thank God for that. Now, speaking of the AI, and I did mention this in my ATS video, I've already seen a mod that puts these double trailers into the AI. Uh, and also, in American Truck Sim, it puts the triples in there as well. Now, the AI as it stands right now, if you watch it go round a roundabout, imagine that when it's got a triple trailer and, and it goes round a roundabout and has a collision with something. You know, I, I, I doubt... I doubt that the AI has been brought up to date to cope with that kind of scenario. Oops, just caught a bit of um, bit of the old side rail there. So I'm kind of expecting fun and games, but then SCS can say, well, you know, you're using a mod which does something which the game was not designed to do, which is fair enough. Ooh. Looks like we've got an airport down there. It does take a while to get up to speed, though. It really does. The other thing is, I would like to know is, are SCS actually working on a multiplayer or not? And the reason I ask that question is, like, we know that they hired one of the main guys from the multiplayer land. Like, one of the guys that built the multiplayer for Eurotruck, we know they hired him. Now, if they hired him, to me, there's an indication there that there's some intention to bring the multiplayer in, officially. And I have talked about this before, but one of the reasons that I don't play the multiplayer very much is because I can't guarantee that the people I'm online with are going to take it seriously. Like, when I, when I drive a truck in Eurotruck, as you can probably see, I tend to try and take it seriously. Not like super hardcore series, but, you know, I'll try to stick to the speed limits, I'll try to stay in my lane. I don't drive around like I'm playing GTA, that kind of thing. And one of the things about the online experience that I don't like, apart from there just being no AI and therefore it's very quiet sometimes, apart from that, is just idiots. It's just, you know, people who don't who don't kind of follow that sense of doing it properly, in quotes, where they try to drive at proper speeds and try to stay in the right lane and they don't want to drive around in an ice cream truck at 90 miles an hour, which is what some people try to do. I don't like that aspect of it. Like, if it's going to be an online trucking experience, I want it to be an online trucking experience. And so if SCS ever do make a multiplayer, in the back of my mind is always, how are they going to... How are they going to solve that problem? How are they going to solve the problem of having idiots on there and getting rid of them? The kind of idiots who crash into the side of your truck and give you a massive repair bill. How are they going to solve that? They need to, and it's not just a simple case of adding admins on there who monitor it, because that's just not enough. You can see from the ETS2 MP that that's not enough. There's admins all day on there, and yet there's idiots on there as well, all the time. So that's not going to work. You could make it a paid service, but even that wouldn't fix it. You could go for something like the iRacing's kind of safety rating and allow people to unlock bigger engines as they go up in safety rating. Maybe that will help. You could allow for private servers so people could, you know, pay for a private server um, and just allow people on it that they know are going to play properly. So you could get a virtual trucking company, for example, 
You could you could set up score logistics, create a private server, and then just allow people who are taking it seriously to play on there. But that's in itself is going to require quite a bit of admin, but would solve the problem. Because I don't think it's a problem that you can solve purely by coding. I mean, even iRacing can't do it. If you have a collision with somebody, it might be their fault, but you're the one that loses their, loses their front wing or and safety rating, even though you never did anything wrong. And they can't solve it with code, so there's no reason to think that SCS can program a solution. Wow, this road's pretty narrow. Blimey. So I don't know, and that's ultimately... Ultimately, these things have to be solved if you want to have an online experience that is um, what you want it to be. The idea that you're driving around with AI cars, um, but, you know, the trucks are actually people. People who are hauling goods and taking it seriously. That's the kind of experience that a lot of people crave, but it's very, very hard to deliver that experience. And in any event, they may not even be working on a multiplayer. So there is that. Right, how far have we got here? 131 Ks. Oh, I just lost momentum. Please don't slow down on lane merge. Because I need the speed right now. Nice sound and engine though, isn't it? So that's, you know, they're the reasons I don't go on the multiplayer very much, to be honest. Is I just don't find it an enjoyable experience. I find it a combination of very empty roads and lots of people who are just being idiots. And you'll see it particular, you know, the notorious places like Europort, for example. Notorious places where it just becomes an absolute mess. People just don't give way. People just push in. People will jump queues. People will do all kinds of annoying things. Uh, which just ruins everybody's experience. And unless you have a way of mitigating that, what the net effect of that kind of environment is this. All the people who want to take it seriously leave. They don't want to be there anymore because it's not what they want. And the only people that you have left are all the idiots. And so you end up with a server full of idiots. That's what happens. I hope they can solve it, but I don't know how. Good luck to them if they can. What is this guy doing? Down the side of me here. Wow. This is like NASCAR racing all of a sudden. He's <laughs> inches away from you. Uh oh. See how he's slowing down to make that... The whole point of that filter lane is that you can keep your speed up, move away from the main traffic and then decelerate. That's the whole point of that lane. But what the AI does is it decelerates and then changes lane, which is the wrong way to do it. I think what it does from a, a programming perspective is it goes, this road is, you know, 80 kilometers, that slip road is 50. So it slows down to 50, then changes into it. And it shouldn't. It should move into it and then change to 50. Well, it's gone from being rainy to rather a nice day. Larty, that's what we passed. Destination Helsinki Renal Logistic. Okay, so Renal Logistic sounds like a kind of warehouse drop off point, probably similar to what we picked up from. Now we'll have to see what the drop off looks like. In doubles, in theory, it should always be a drive in because it should never make you reverse a double. That's the theory. What the modders are going to do with it, though, is open for question. Like, I'm wondering if it will be possible for them to create a mod which allows delivery outside of, of a double outside of Scandinavia. I'm kind of wondering if they're going to do that. Or whether it's just not going to be possible. Oh, 
Helsinki, 58 kilometers from that sign, and 49 kilometers according to the job, which implies that the job is on this side of Helsinki. I do like the mirrors on this VNL. They're, they're very big, they're very clear, and you get the smaller one down the bottom there with the wide angle, and you even get those as well, which personally I don't use, but I'd probably just remove them, I think. Whoa! That angle, <laughs> that descent rate was pretty scary. I wish they'd adjust that, you know. I wish they'd um, adjust the, the descent angle and speed to be more realistic because they, they honestly look like they're crashing when they come in. The airfield was over there. Yeah, it's pretty hard to see because we're actually below the runway level. Okay, I can actually see our destination on the map now. The thing is about these doubles is, once you're moving on a on a highway like this, you don't tend to notice them so much. They're not a problem. The only time they really become a problem is during any kind of steep descent or ascent where you really do feel the weight, or when you get into town and you've got to take those corners, or, I expect if you start to take yourself off the beaten track and go down some more interesting roads rather than these big, kind of motorway roads. Come on. See what I mean? The drop in momentum is makes the engine really struggle. Okay, I'm going to stay in the right lane because we're going right. We're under 50. Keep seeing his little shady speed cameras. Okay, traffic lights. Let's have a look at the truck while we're waiting. So yeah, what I did was I created... There's one of the uh, one of the paint skins that you get with your truck. It's like that, but it's in a horrible kind of greenish colour. And I basically took it and slid the sliders around to make it grey and black. And I ended up with this wonderful carbon fibre effect, which I think looks amazing. Like, who wouldn't want a carbon fibre Volvo? Although the, the cost of the carbon fibre would be horrendous. Okay, that truck's moving very, very slowly through these lights. I'm expecting to miss this light now because the truck is giving way, apparently, even though we just went through a green light. So, yeah. That's one example of what I mean. Look at that. About AI problems right at the moment. Like, it went through a red light and then it just gave way for something that wasn't even coming. And then it went very, very, very slowly around the corner. I just don't get what's going on there at all. But I keep seeing that. Now, not just the van. The van didn't do it at all. It was only the truck that did it. You know, I don't know many places in England anymore that have cobble streets. It's just far too expensive to maintain. But Helsinki seems to love it. Okay, delivery point is... Looks like we get back on a main road and then immediately jump back off again. It's actually over there. That's the drop-off point.
Okay, let's try and figure out where the drop-off is now. Hopefully, it's on the right-hand side as we drive in. There it is. I was going to say, because I know this bay, and I thought to myself, it's either going to be on the right side as you drive in, or it's going to have to be over there. And it's over there, we're going to have to reverse into it. A pretty straightforward drop-off. Frame rates have taken a battering again. Went a bit too far with it. There we go. It's weird because if you actually look at that, I was basically driving up so we were in the box, but for some reason, if you go a bit far forward, it's, it's out of the box. It doesn't make any sense to me. But that is the job complete. Let's have a look at what we got. Excelente! Protective clothing delivered to Helsinki. Should bring in a little bit more XP. There we go. On our way to level 72. 25 and a half grand paid out. Now luckily, there's enough room to just about get out of here. I mean, if you had a cab over, it wouldn't be a problem, to be honest. But you can see I've only just got enough room with this thing. There we go. Another successful delivery. Hope you enjoyed that kind of uh, quick look at Eurotruck 128. That is the public beta, which you can play now. Um, hopefully that will that'll go into full release within about a week or so. And that was also Promo 2.2 beta, which is not yet out on public release. So you'll have to wait for that one. Uh, and that was Arades Volvo VNL in a carbon fiber look. That's it from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a like if you did, guys. Otherwise, take care. Happy trucking.